Okay, we're going to move on. Quick announcement. Cuckoo Events team is doing their best right now to get the handouts from Bert's message yesterday and Matt's talk, who's about to go on to your email. So keep an eye on your email because you could have that handout coming through any minute. It's okay if you don't have it immediately, you can still be in Matt's message and still re refer back to that handout if that's what has to happen afterwards. So Matt Graves, here we go. If you're not familiar with Matt, you are about to be, and you should be familiar with Matt because he's amazing. Okay. So when Matt was brand new, his very first appointment with an ex-girlfriend's parents, that's a unique situation. I'm sure not everybody dealt with on their very first appointment. He was excited, but he was nervous. Still my customer. Still his customer. He found out, by the way, during the appointment, they already had cuckoo and they loved it. So of course that helped build his confidence. They did only buy uh, one knife on that first appointment, but he was still stoked he made a sale because it was his first cuckoo owner he ever saw also. So that's super cool. When he was at 30K in sales, he joined the events team, mainly because he wanted to learn a new skill set. He wanted to add another layer to his business and because he really wanted to transition out of having home selling be his main thing. And so nowadays he's at 4.8 million in career sales. He's in the top 20 of all time Cutco sales rep ever since the Cutco company started, right? With 4.8 million in sales. Um, he's confident, he's hardworking, he's disciplined, he's persistent, he's optimistic. Other people tell him all the time that he looks like Mark Wahlberg and that he's inspiring. He's super buff. He's also a professional bodybuilder, by the way. I don't know if I'm saying that word right. You can correct me later, Matt, if that's the wrong word to use. So 2021 highlights, check this out. He was only, because of a couple of canceled orders, he was only $400 away from selling $900,000 last year. Amazing. He was the silver cup winner in his category. He broke the all-time December sales record with $213,878. He was the number one ultimate salesperson in Cutco. I think last year as well, he was the number one flatware Cutco sales rep in Cutco last year. He had his biggest week ever in his career last year at $63,697. He had over 1,200 orders last year. He did over 325 sharpening appointments and sharpened over 3,000 knives last year. So also taking care of his customers. Some career highlights. He's worked 354 events. He, sold, he has sold 3,574,836, so 3.5 million at the booth. He sold, by the way, last year's 900 grand, 775,000 of it was at the booth. Average order of nearly $1,000. He had one event that was a 26 day event that he sold 121,000 at. He had another event that was a 10 day event. He sold 120,000 at. So this guy knows how to sell. He was asked to give this message today because of all that, of course, and because he's good at closing fast, handling objections, a couple of interesting things you may not know. And I don't know if you heard this yesterday, Matt, but so Matt was also a competitive chess player in middle school. If you didn't know, Rob Robinchuk was also a competitive chess player in school. Oh, so nice. you guys should, I want to see the Matt Rob <laughs> chess playoff as the next thing we do. That's going to that. be awesome. Yeah. And Matt grew up with horses and riding horses a lot. And when I asked about the movie question, what movie would you have been in if you could be in any movie? He's like, no question. I'm Batman. Just call me Bruce Wayne. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> it is Matt Graves. Awesome. Thank you so much, Amy. What an intro. And Josh, um, awesome message. Uh, got a lot of good nuggets from that. And uh, just love hearing uh, high level talks. So appreciate you. And uh, hello, everybody. Um, thank you for taking the time to be on today. I'm excited to give this message about upselling or upserving on every order. Um, as Amy mentioned, Dave should be emailing um, a copy of my message. So this will be something that you guys can like review and look at later. So don't worry about like taking exact detailed notes of everything I talk about. If you miss something, don't even worry because you're going to have the handout to review it. Um, later on and for the rest of the year. So it'll be a great sales tool for you guys to take your up serving to the next level. Um, what I really wanted to talk about though was the power in the impact that getting really good at up serving can do for you. Um, obviously the number one thing it really kind of changes for your business is your average order. And your average order is something that will help you grow at an exponential level year after year. Um, I call it working smarter not working harder. And to me, it is the one discipline that can really help you sell more without necessarily working more, if that makes sense. So time efficiency and productivity behind the booth um, is really what like, I think my gift is, is how do I sell more with the same amount of events without necessarily adding more work days to my calendar year. So getting the sale, just remember guys, this is the hard part. 
when you first get the yes and get the credit card, that's where like 90% of the work gets done. That's where all the energy is required. Um, adding to the order after the fact only really takes a few extra minutes and only really takes an extra um, you know, amount of energy, but it's much less effort than you might think it is. So the game changer is making sure that you commit to the upserve every single time. If you can do that one thing for yourself this year is just commit to upserving with every interaction, I promise you, you'll probably grow your business by 20 or 30%. Um, so this really could be the one needle mover that really helps you grow your business in 2022. So I'm really excited to dive into the meat and potatoes um, and to give you guys like the behind the scenes of what my mindset is for um, taking my average order to the next level. First off, though, I want to go over some stats that can really help you understand the impact that a skill set like upserving can do for your average order. Um, when I got serious about my numbers, it was probably 2016, and I really wanted to find a way to sell at a higher level, sell more CPO with the same amount of events or the same amount of work that I was already doing. I didn't want to necessarily like work even more because I did like my lifestyle and I pride myself on traveling, doing passions like snowboarding and golfing. And obviously I'm a pro bodybuilder now. So working out takes up a lot of time, but competing is also something that takes up time that I don't want to necessarily give up just to work more. So just to give you my personal stats in 2016, I sold $332,000 on 732 orders. My average order size is only 454, okay? So this is 2016. Now, 2016 was actually the year Brandon Brown taught me the objection cycle. So that's whenever I began to master handling objections. But in addition to that, my goal is to master selling ultimate sets, flatware chest, and then from there, it was like package deals and Cutco kitchens cookware, and then adding other layers like business gifts and um, accessory package. And then um, obviously upserving was just a commitment I made from 2016 moving forward was what was my upserving standard. So fast forward two more years in 2018, I sold 563,000 on 766 orders. So only 30 orders more than 2016 but I had a 736 average per order. So that was literally the reason for my growth from 2016 to 2018. It's an extra 230,000 CPO with almost the same amount of orders. So just like let that sink in for a second because a lot of you have that opportunity to have that growth with one shift in your business, increasing the average order, by upserving or adding to the orders every single time. And then obviously in 2021, um, I had my best year, almost 900,000. I actually sold $840,000, um, I think behind the booth, that's including service events though. And my average order was 957. So in a five year span, I went from 454 average order size to 957. And that's really what the growth in my CPO has come from, was just the discipline of raising the average order. And I'm kind of pissed I didn't get over a thousand. So that's the mission this year is to get over a thousand dollar average order size. Now that's just for personal stats. I also wanted to bring up the impact this has on team selling. So think about whenever you have a large event, right? Everyone with their state fairs or big home shows, or just key events in general, imagine the average order size as a team and what that can do for your event and the growth of that event year after year. A good example I have of this is um, in December last year, a team, or my team, uh, South Coast Division, we have this uh, NFR, National Finals Rodeo, and there's a really good event called Cowboy Christmas. So, um, I'm going to give some tough love to Texas and the Texoma team. They actually had a booth at the same event as us, same exact building, 
same show, same customers. Now we ended up selling 175,000 CPO, but what was really impressive about the South Coast team is as a team, we averaged 1,055 for our average order, which was huge. Texoma team did really well. They sold about 94,000, but their average order size was only 772. And so obviously they have a great team, elite level reps, but I wanted to give you some perspective. So they had 122 orders at the same event. And if they would have had our average, which was a 1075 or 1055, they would have actually sold an extra 37,000 CPO just with a different average order size. And that's just one event. So if you actually take all your key events over the year and you think about the impact of your team's average order size, that could significantly increase and grow. So that's just what I wanted to bring up to show people like the power of this message and what it could be for not just you, but if your entire team starts to, you know, work on this as, as a skill set. And then I want to give a shout out to the top four reps in the company. So Kareem last year was the only representative that had over a thousand dollar average order size. So it was a thousand forty eight. And uh, shout out to you, Kareem. Um, I know you've worked really hard the last few years at the Cutco Kitchen, and um, you've been really inspired, inspired, inspiring, and motivation for me. And uh, I know like Brandon and the rest of the federal team to um, reach those limits as well. Luciano is right behind him, 969. And then I was right behind Luciano. And then shout out to Brandon Brown. Um, he was the number four rep in the company with average order size. So any of those four people um, obviously have mastered selling at a high level and having the highest average order in the company. Now let's get into the fun stuff. So here's my question is, what's your up serving standard? Think about this in like a football standpoint. The best teams are all teams in general. They have a playbook, right? And in that playbook, they have all these different types of plays for offense and defense. And they're able to call audibles depending on the situation in the game. If you don't have an up-serving standard in place for yourself, it makes it really difficult to smoothly up-serve your customers every single time because everyone has different needs and wants. But if you have that playbook right here in your head and you have plays ready to go, you will always be able to upsell every single order, every single time, okay? What I wanna share with you is what runs through my mindset with every single interaction that I have with the customer. The first thing that I always have in mind is complete set. Okay. That's my number one go-to upserve and whether they have some Cutco or whether they just bought a smaller set from me. So let's say like a homemaker or a signature set. My goal is to always get the customer to upgrade to the complete set before they leave. So once I get the credit card, that's my mission. How do I convince these people or how do I upserve them to the complete set? So here's a couple of key questions you can ask people, okay? And again, this is going to be in the handout. If you miss it, feel free to, um, you know, review it later. Um, don't, don't, don't worry about missing the questions word for word. So the first question I typically ask people um, as I'm starting the upserve is, Mrs. Jones, would having the complete set be the ultimate goal one day? Okay. Would having the complete set be the ultimate goal one day? The follow-up question after that is, do you feel like you would eventually upgrade to it? So let's say someone bought the homemaker or someone bought the you know, family set. I just wanna get an idea. Do they think they'll upgrade it eventually? Okay. Most of the time, people want the complete set. 
Um, they're either buying the basic set or the, you know, family set because budget or just based off their current cooking. But the goal is typically always the complete set. So my last question is, I always say, if I did an extra little turbo incentive, but it still fit the budget, would you consider just going with the complete set today? So how many of you guys actually attempt to upserve the set you just sold to the complete set instead of just taking what they said yes to? Imagine how many more ultimates you could possibly sell if you just had the dis 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 or discipline to actually like ask for the ultimate set one more time. So here's my key selling points that I focus on whenever I'm actually like trying to sell a complete set. Um, I focus on how it's a one and done set. The peace of mind that you never have to worry about buying knives again, having the right knife for the right job. And then I always focus on these three main things that it's for people that love to cook, love to barbecue and love to entertain. That's like my three go-to selling points for people that buy the complete set. And then also just focus on the best selling knives for meats and veggies, right? Cause that's kind of like what that set comes with is the best meat cutting knives, filleting knives and veggie knives. Now here's a secret weapon that I'm gonna share with you all because this is actually something I do very consistently with selling ultimate sets or complete sets. So my secret weapon is actually convincing the client to gift away their old set and just buy themselves a new complete set. I've done this hundreds of times. Some of you have probably even witnessed me doing it. So quick example is someone has a homemaker. They're considering adding a few more pieces or even possibly upgrading to the complete set, okay? What I like to do is I challenge them with the question. And I say, just out of curiosity, is there anyone in the family you would ever consider giving a set of cut code to? Because I have a great idea for you. How about I just give you a turbo deal on a new set for you. And then once the set arrives, you can use the box and the bubble wrap to send back your old set, Cutco will then refurbish, sharpen, or replace it, and then mail it back to you like brand new in two weeks. Now you have an amazing gift to give to your son or daughter or friend. And overall, it's a win-win because now you're going to have the best deal on a new complete set for yourself. How does that sound? And I get a lot of people that love that idea because they do have someone that they do want to gift it to. And they love the idea of just getting a whole new set versus like upgrading and then still having to buy a gift for their child later. Okay. So that's my secret weapon to selling more complete sets to people that already have cut cone general. My next bread and butter when it comes to upserving is the flatware. Um, as Amy mentioned, I was the number one flatware salesperson last year. Um, I love selling flatware. I think it's one of the easiest upserves that we have just because of the value and the quality of it. So my commitment has always been to bring it up to every single customer, every single time, no matter what I sell. If I get a walk-up table knife, I'm showing the flatware. If I get a walk-up peeler, I'm showing the flatware. If I get someone adding, you know, a few knives to their homemaker set, if they're doing an ultimate upgrade, I show the flatware. It's my bread and butter. It's like my pride and joy when it comes to upserving. And uh, most of my flatware sales actually come from after getting the credit card. Like I would say 75% of my flatware sales come from after the credit card. So here's some key questions to ask with the flatware, okay? What's your current flatware situ situation like at home? Let them talk. Let them, let them talk about how they've had the same flatware since they were married 20 years ago, how it's a mixed match place setting, how you know it's rusted, bent, broken, cheap. Let them talk about their current flatware situation. 
My follow-up question is, have you guys ever considered upgrading or replacing your flatware? And then that'll give me an idea if it's someone that's serious about it and I can like dive deeper into actually trying to sell it. And then my favorite question to ask is if someone is interested in getting flatware or let's say I did upserve it, I don't stop there. I always ask this question. How many place settings would be good for you and the family? Could you use 24 to 36 place settings throughout certain times of the years? And then you can mention like the holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter, et cetera. That question alone, if you do it every single time on a flatware upserve, you will probably like maybe 5% of the time get someone that actually does need 24 place settings or 36 place settings or more. And I've sold multiple 24 place settings and I think I've done 36, like three or four times in my career. Um, and it literally just came from that question. Hey, is 12 enough or could you use 24 to 36 place settings? And just because you asked, it opens up their mindset of actually I could, what's the deal on that? And then boom, upserve 2000 to 3000 CPO, just like that. Okay. Some key selling points on the flatware, obviously American made guaranteed forever. Most flatware is not American made. And I don't think any flatware really has the forever guarantee like we do. So it is a really big selling point to remind people that over and over, not just the knives. The flatware also has the same warranty. It's American made quality. And then I always touch on the 1810 stainless and why that's the preferred quality even over silver, because silver obviously rusts and tarnishes over time. It's not dishwasher safe. It's very high maintenance. So people typically use it once or twice a year. 1810 is designed to be used daily. It's your daily flatware from now on. Also the timeless design looks just like our Cutco handles. Can't beat it. Good for special occasions, but also still nice for everyday use. And then my favorite line that I use that really kind of hits home with customers is I talk about how the knives are great. They're sharp. They help you prep faster, prep easier, but there might be some days where you don't cook as often. So you might not be using the knives every single day. What's great about the flatware is it's the number one investment you can you know, do with us. And it's the most used in investment with Cutco. So you're going to use it multiple meals every single day for the rest of your life. So it's the greatest return on your investment that you can make with Cutco. And whenever I say that to people, they get it because yeah, you eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You're going to use forks and spoons a lot more than you're going to use your knives. So as an investment, it makes sense. My next standard for upserving is always the cookware. So cookware for me, unless someone is like, super interested off the get-go about cookware, I always like make that my upserve after the flatware, okay? And there's been times, guys, where I've followed this standard where I do like the complete set, flatware, then cookware, where I've actually landed all the upserves and it turned into a Cutco kitchen. So that's kind of like why I do this process is you're just kind of like doing a process of elimination. You're just seeing which package sticks for the upserve. But for the cookware, I say it's the most expensive thing we make, but it's also the most important investment for your kitchen. And one of the key lines that I use is the knives help you prep food a little faster and easier, but the cookware will truly change the quality of the food that you're cooking in your kitchen. Okay, I'll say that again. The knives help you prep food a little faster and easier, but the cookware will truly change the quality of food that you're cooking in the kitchen. And then here's my key questions that I ask in the upserve process. Just like the flatware, hey, Mrs. Jones, what's your cookware situation like at home? I, I avoid like, do you like your cookware that you have? Um, and any questions like that, because some people might think their Teflon is good. Or some people might be happy with their $200 cookware set at home. So I just ask, what's your cookware situation like? Because then they just describe to me what they have and if they like it or if they don't. So it gives me a little bit more 
information or process so that I can in, use my sales tactics to explain to them why our cookware is next level. And it's definitely a better investment than what they have. Okay. Next question is, have you ever considered upgrading or replacing your cookware? You got to ask, right? You, you never know unless you just ask. And that's how you can figure out if it's a candidate for uh, someone that wants to buy cookware. And then here's my favorite question for people that like already have high quality. So people that are like, oh, I have salad master and I love it. Oh, I have kitchen craft and I love it. I have lifetime cookware and I love it. Some people actually do have good cookware and acknowledge them for it. Actually praise them for buying good quality early on. Um, but don't stop up serving. One thing that I did for myself, which Dave helped me out with was uh, actually upgrading to the complete cookware, you know, package. So I have every single piece of cookware. And uh, two years ago when I did that, I, I started selling cookware like crazy, cut coke kitchens like crazy, because people can actually see the entire product line of cookware. But what I found out was it's actually easier to add our cookware to people's collection if they have good stuff already. So for the people that did have Salad Master, Kitchen Craft, Lifetime, et cetera, I always just say, well, out of curiosity, have you ever thought about complementing your cookware with a few more of our specialty pans? So think about the walk and cover, the 10 quart, and then the griddle. Those are the three easiest pieces of cookware to add to the order for people that already have good pants. Because a lot of people don't have a good walk or they could use a better 10 quart. And then obviously the griddle is just such a great pan for breakfast food, steaks, hamburger patties, et cetera. So I can't even tell you how many walks I've sold as an upserve last year. Like just so many walks were just added to the order. And that's, you know, 600 bucks right there. Key selling points, as you guys already know, um, American made guaranteed forever. Talk about the layers of metal, the quality of the stainless, um, the aluminum core for even heat distribution. Um, talk about the vapor seal, how it locks the pressure in and uh, cooks your food twice as fast on lower heat. And then really just hit home on like how safe the cookware is to use. No more dangers of toxins from Teflon or nonstick coatings, no cheap metals that leak out toxins. And overall, the easiest selling point is high quality, low maintenance. People love hearing about how easy it is to clean, dishwasher safe, et cetera. Number four on the upserving standard is the family program. So this actually has been something that I've been getting better at over the last two or three years. And uh, it's one of my favorite programs to bring up during the upserving process. So if you're not doing this, this could be a game changer for you, but it's perfect to bring up the family program anytime you know that your customer has kids or grandkids or just like really good friends. And what I say is, Mrs. Jones, we actually came out with this program to incentivize our customers to buy more Cutco as gifts for family and friends. Think about it. They will use it every single day for the rest of their lives. Plus, they'll always remember who got them started on Cutco. So it is the gift that keeps on giving with a smile. And then the key questions to ask, number one, would you ever consider giving Cutco as a gift to anyone? Obviously some people are like, no, it's too expensive. And I just say, oh, you don't love them that much? <laughs> but most people, like if they have kids, they're like, oh, that's a great idea. And then you can see that the wheels start like churning in their head. So the follow-up question to that is, you know, who comes to mind when you think about buying Cutco as a gift? So now you're helping them brainstorm names, okay? And then the follow-up question to that is, hey, just for fun, can I show you what kind of deal I can do if we added a few sets for the kids, right? A lot of times I'll show them the brochure. So just like Josh was talking about, use those tools that we have. The family program brochure, I always pull that out when I mention the family program. And I talk about how you can get someone started on something small, like a five-piece bundle, 
or you can even get them the big set. And a lot of times what I try to do is convince them to buy their kids the same set that they have. That tends to work really well because if they love their set and they've had it for 15, 20 years, they kind of want to have that same experience for their kids where they have like a block, best sellers plus steak knives. So I try to start there. And then obviously if it's a budget thing, we always work down to like a five piece bundle. But again, hey, just for fun, can I show you what it would cost if we added three showstoppers to this order? Knock out Christmas early, you know? So uh, key selling points, obviously American made guaranteed forever. It's not something they will spend, use, eat, drink, and then forget about. It's actually something that will last them forever. And then I always mention how this will help them get their Christmas shopping done early. So, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's January, February, March, people can do their Christmas shopping with you right now. If you're doing service events right now, or if you're at the booth and you're not promoting Christmas gifts yet, you're losing out on CPO, easy CPO too. The next standard I have for my upserving process is the accessory package, okay? So this is like perfect for people that want like a peeler <laughs> or want like the ice cream scoop or want the kitchen tools. You know, you get people that typically ask about a few gadget items after they buy a set from you or like, hey, how much are the cutting boards, right? Or hey, how much is the, the barbecue set? If you're not promoting the accessory package, you're shooting yourself in the foot, okay? So this is what I call the clean out your kitchen drawer package. I think I got that from someone else, but ever since I heard that, I just kept using it. And here's the key questions to ask. Number one, do you have a bunch of mixed matched gadgets that take up your kitchen drawer space? Follow up, how cool would it be to replace all your kitchen gadgets with American-made quality and a forever guarantee so you never have to worry about buying or replacing them ever again? One and done, okay? So key selling point, one and done. Clean out the kitchen clutter and enjoy quality tools forever. And you'd be surprised how many people jump on the package. So this will turn like, you know, a 50 CPO peeler into a 900 CPO package or a thousand CPO package. And a lot of people, if they're doing like a remodel or uh, replacing things in the kitchen already anyways, it's kind of like a no brainer, right? Get rid of all the clutter, place it with the new stuff. My next standard for uh, upserving is the hunting or outdoor package, okay? Um, this specific package, I love it for specific shows, okay? So think about like clients at gun shows, fishing and boat shows, rodeos, or like hunting shows, okay? And I think everybody everywhere in every state has these type of shows. But imagine if you were able to convert like a fisherman solution or a lockback knife or a drop point knife into the hunting bundle, right? And a lot of this really just comes down to that discipline of asking to show them the package deal that the knife they want comes with. Not just taking that easy the sale of the one or two knives, but actually promoting and trying to upserve the package. So my key questions I like to ask is, hey, do you do any hunting or fishing or know anyone that does? And the reason why I ask them or know anyone that does is because a lot of times I'll actually sell them on the package. And one of the selling points is that they can give a few of those knives as a gift to their family or friends and then keep the two or three that they want for themselves. So it's like a win-win, okay? So just for fun, I can show you a popular bundle that includes a great variety of our outdoor knives. And then again, key selling points, right knife for the right job, multiple gifts in one package. And then this is actually a great selling line for um, doing a bundle package with our outdoor knives. Is I say, Mr. Jones or Mrs. Jones, What's great about having this package is that you can actually send in your knives at the end of each hunting season to get them sharpened or replaced so that you can always start the next season with fresh new knives. 
And that's a really good selling point for a lot of these people. All right, last standard for my upserving, and then I'm actually go over some quick upserving tactics, and then we'll wrap this up. So business gifts, right? This actually ends up becoming one of the main upserves, depending on you know conversation and scenarios. But obviously, it's in my upserving standard to bring it up every single time. But this is a great upserve when you meet business owners, when you meet realtors, when you meet lenders. Okay. Um, key questions to ask, do you own a business? Are you a realtor or a lender? A lot of times their emails will give this away. Okay. <laughs> Just look for their emails. Normally it's a business email, or you can tell it's a realtor or a lender email and then boom, ask the question. A lot of times I got this from Curtis working, uh, the Houston rodeo, um, look for logos on their hats, their shirts, their belt buckles, their wallets. Um, those are dead giveaways as well. Hey, is that your company on your hat? You own a business? Perfect. Follow-up question is this. Do you happen to give out appreciation gifts to your clients, employees, referrals, et cetera? Follow-up question after that is, in the next six months to a year, how many gifts do you plan to give out roughly? Okay, now you're asking a, you know, a question on how many units they probably give out. And then obviously the upserving question to ask is, can I show you the specials that we have for business gift options while we're here at the show? And then if you don't have the business gifts in your specials book, you're losing out on some easy CPO at shows, okay? It's a great way to just flip it open, show them the show specials, try to lock them in on 10, 50, 100,000 gift sets right there. Key selling points, um, top of mind awareness, a gift that's used daily, tax write-off for their business. And then the most important thing I think is letting them know that it's really a system in place for future gifts. Kind of like Josh was talking about how now he locked in a, a good client for like 6,000 CPO, but they're already in the works and they have systems in place for future CPO. That's the relationship you want to create with this, uh, with this upserve. So that's my standard, guys. Again, complete set, flatware, cookware, family program, accessory package, hunting package, business gifts. I literally have that as a playbook in my head. So every customer I work with, based off the scenario, I run through those options. Obviously, not everyone sticks. But if you can actually make a commitment to do this every time, imagine getting one to two of those every single customer you work with and adding an extra 500 to 1,000 CPO every single order. Here's the final part of my message, which I think will be really helpful as well. And uh, these are just the simple upserving tactics that I have with every single order. So one of my favorite ones is adding just a knife or two at full retail price. I don't know a lot of people that do this I know Brandon's really good at this, but have you ever just tried to add a knife or two at full retail as your first upserve? It's the easiest way to add an extra 200 to 300 CPO to your order. So the key question I ask, let's say someone's getting a homemaker, okay? Or let's say someone's getting a galley set or a five-piece bundle. And I know for a fact they want the hearty slicer or they want the scissors, or they want the petite santoku, or they want the cheese knife. I just simply ask them when I get the credit card, hey, I know you really like the scissors. I know it doesn't come in your set, but it sounds like you'll probably get really good use out of it, right? Since you're already doing the payments, if you wanted to add it to the order, it's only an extra 20 to $30 a month. So I would just add it on so you don't have to worry about buying it later. What do you think? So many times people will literally just say, okay, yeah, go ahead and add it on. And you have the easiest upserve right there. Now, what this really does though, is actually builds momentum for the next upserves that you have coming down the pipeline. So the other question I, I say, or the other comment I say is if you'll use it and you know, you'll probably buy it later, I would just add it on today. Okay. 
And then here's my go-to add-ons. Shears, hearty slicer, cheese knife, petite santoku, and steak knives. Those are all my go-to like one to two knife upserves that I try to do at full retail. Like no bonuses, no discounts, nothing. My next tactic is what I call the wish list upserve, okay? So once I'm done, uh, I'm not done, but once I get the credit card and I'm still like filling out the order, my wish list upserve is this. Mrs. Jones, I do this with all my customers. What would you say would be on your future wish list or what would be next on the priority list? So a lot of times they'll tell you right there, oh, we want the flatware, we want the cookware, or we want this. You just make notes of it, right? And before you wrap up the order, you just say, well, hey, because you're here now, if I went out of my way to do an extra turbo incentive, so you felt really good about getting your wish list items today, would you consider it? So now, now you're just trying to knock out the wish list that they told you they wanted, okay? And that works a lot too. Package deal or Cutco Kitchen. Obviously, the goal is always to do a bundle deal once you close the set. Um, if you're not talking about like the Cutco Kitchen being the end goal for all of our customers, you're losing out on some easy upserves as well. So here's some key questions around that. Just so you know, if you bundle the flatware, the cookware with your knife set, we do an extra incentive as a package deal. What would actually be next on the priority list, the flatware or the cookware? And then can I show you what the package deal would look like? And then let's say they're like, oh, that sounds great, but we'll probably wait on it. And you say, hey, out of curiosity, if I were to do an extra turbo incentive so that you felt really good about doing the package deal today, would you consider it? And then let's say you're trying to upserve from a, a knife set and flatware to like the Cutco kitchen, okay? Key question is, hey, Mrs. Jones, is the Cutco kitchen something that you can see yourself eventually having? And then same thing, if I can do an extra turbo incentive so that you can be one and done and never have to buy kitchen tools ever again, would you consider getting the Cutco kitchen today? And then what I like to say as a follow-up is if you know you'll eventually build up to it, but you can actually fit it in the budget right now, I would just recommend getting the Cutco Kitchen because it is the number one deal at the show. And a lot of times, if it makes sense for them, they'll do it. And then the last two things, just to wrap up, is the family and friend deal. Um, this is probably one of my favorite upserves that I've been getting a lot better at is when someone has a family member or a friend witnessing the entire demo, but their friend's the only one that's buying, I always try to like get that other person involved and buy the same exact set, okay? I have done this many times. I've watched Curtis do this a lot of times too, and he's kind of like the inspiration behind doing this better. But I always just joke around and have fun and I say, hey, by the way, just so you know, we actually have a family and friend deal here at the show. So if you actually both buy the same set, you're going to get each get an extra bonus from me to you. So it's kind of like a win-win scenario. Are you in the market for knives too? Do you want to see what that family and friend deal would do for you guys? And then a lot of times the friend just sells the other friend like, Hey, yeah, I'm buying it. You got to get it too. It's such an easy way to like double up on sets, flatware, cookware, et cetera. Um, I actually did it like four different times at my show in Vegas in December. It was like an amazing thing because there's a lot of like groups of friends shopping together. And I was like, oh, I'm just going to keep doing this all show. And uh, my best uh, demo was with actually three different families and only one lady was buying at first. And then she convinced the other two friends to both buy signature sets as well. So it's three signature sets on one order or technically it was three different orders, but yeah, one demo one set turned into three sets. All right, my last tactic, I'm not gonna talk about it too much, um, but it is the option to do a 10 pay and a 15 pay. And the key thing I wanna share with you guys is that like it's perfect for customers that they know want flatware and cookware, but they just 100% can't budget it. 
today, okay? So what I say is, hey, Mrs. Jones, are you pretty confident this is something that you're gonna get in the near future? And is the budget the only reason why you wouldn't get it today? And then here's my closing line is, well, I do have a solution if you're open to it. We have a special program called the 10 pay or the 15 pay. And what that means is I can actually lock you in for the package deal discount since we're here at the show now, but we actually wouldn't start the payments for your flatware or cookware until after your knives are paid off month five. And what this will do for you, Mrs. Jones, is it guarantees you the discount rate without worrying about paying way more for it later. Plus, it's going to keep your payments at a way more comfortable amount, and it still accomplishes the same goal of getting the package deal. And that's where a lot of your extra easy CPO from upserving can come from. Yeah, it's not CPO in that exact order, but it's two to $3,000 of CPO that you don't have to fight for later, right? It's already guaranteed, locked in, as long as the payment goes through. So that's what I have, guys. And what I want to say is, I know that's a lot of information, um, and that's a lot of different upserving tactics, but here is my goal for all of you. What I would do is I would pick one to two upserves that you want to master and that you want to commit to strategically showing to every single customer you work with this year. So whether it's the complete set, flatware, cookware, family program, just pick two upserves that you want to master and that you want to commit to showing to every single customer this year. And I promise you, your average order will go up exponentially. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed that. And uh, obviously, if anyone has questions about it, you can reach out to me. But you guys will be giving, uh, are getting that handout. So feel free to go through the handout, use it as a tool for the whole year. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Matt. That was amazing.